Hello, I am Jonas, the creator of vhdelvis.com. In today's video, I'm going to talk to you about Tickle-based test benches. Tickle, or TCL as it's spelled, but it's pronounced Tickle, is a scripting language which is used in most VHDL and FPGA tools. So if you type something in the Model Sim console or in the Vivado console, then that's a Tickle command. And you can use this scripting language also for creating test benches. Now Tickle is not VHDL, it's a software-based scripting language, but you can also use it to create test benches for VHDL modules, and that's what I'm going to show you today. So right now I'm presenting my new blog post, which I'm creating at the moment, but by the time I publish this video, this blog post will also be published, and you can get to it by going to the video description and clicking the link which will take you to this blog post. And you can also download the uh, VHDL files and the Molsim project that I'm running in this video. Just go to the blog post and look for the Need the Molsim project files form. Enter your email address and click Give me the files and you should receive them in your inbox within minutes. I have of course already downloaded the zip file and this is the one. So I'm going to just right click and unzip this file in my download folder, I'm going to enter the folder. Inside of here, we have uh, some usage explanations, how to run .gif and how to run .txt, the Molsim project files, and the run.do file that we're going to run in just a few moments. And there's also a wave file, and there's the code lock folder, and this is where the uh, VHDL module that we're going to test and its test bench resides. So, it's the code lock module, a VHDL test bench for the code lock module, and the tickle based test bench. So this is the device on the test, and um, and what it is is a code lock module, uh, something like this. You have, for example, seen a safe in a hotel room. When you type uh, the pin code in the safe, the vault opens, and you get access to whatever is inside. And the VHDL module that we are going to use as the device and the test in this video is something like this. So it's a simpler version of this um, hotel safe because it has all of the pin numbers or pin inputs, but it doesn't have the clear and the lock button. So it just unlocks when you type the four correct digits. Uh, and this is, this is how it's going to work. So this is the waveform from the blog post for the device and the test. So it has a clock input and a reset input and a digit input and an enable input. So this input digit, let's just uh, imagine that this one is coming from the pin pad. So when we type something on the pin pad, uh, each time we type, this number changes and the input enable signal is going to uh, go from zero to one for one clock cycle. So the pin pad has to do this work and when we type the, um, the four uh, correct pin numbers, then the vault is going to un unlock. So these are the input uh, signals. And when we type four successive numbers, which match the uh, correct passcode, then this, the uh, device in the test is going to uh, set the unlock signal, which is the only output. So when we type the four correct pin code, in this case, uh, one, two, three, four, then the output, the unlock signal is going to go from zero to one until we type something else and then it's going to go to zero again or, un to, or, or, or it's going to lock the vault once more. Uh, now I have uh, downloaded the, uh, the, uh, the project file, so I'm going to right click in the folder and open it in VS Code. So Inside of this code lock folder is the device on the test, the code lock module. I'm not going to go into the details of this module because we're going to focus on the tickle based test bench. But we have to know that the code lock module has a generic input, the four pins. So these are defined at compile time or uh, synthesis time. You have to specify what is the correct pin code. And it has the clock and reset input in the port. And of course the input digit and the input enable, which, which we already have talked about. And then there's the unlock output. This is the implementation. You can have a, a more detailed look in the blog post or in the code that you can download. But we also have a VHDL test bench for it. 
That's right, we're going to create a tickle based test bench, but we still have to have a basic VHDL test bench just to get started the, the uh, simulation. We can't start the simulation without a test bench. And, but, um, yeah, and, you, and you can see the whole VHDL test bench here, it doesn't do much. Uh, it instantiates the device on the test and it generates the clock. That's all that it does actually. The only thing this one, this test bench does is to generate the clock, it doesn't check anything. But we have the signals defined here, which we are connecting to the device on the test. And we have the clock constant, so the clock frequency and the clock period is defined in the VHDL test bench because we are generating the clock in here. And um, well, before I show you the tickle based test bench, I'm going to just start the simulation um, manually in ModelSim, or I'm actually going to run the uh, do file in the zip that I downloaded to just get started quickly. To do that, I'm going to type do and the path to the run.do file in the extracted zip file. C colon users, my username downloads because it's in the download folder. TCL driven TV is the extracted folder. And this is all in the readme file, the how to run.txt. So um, um, what I'm doing now is uh, in the zip file, in the text file, just download the zip and extract it so you can um, read the readme file and see what to do. So I'm typing uh, do and the path to the run.do file. And when I type enter, it compiles the files and loads the project and you get an explanation for how to run the example. And this is how to run it. Type source and the path to the tickle file. But, but before we do that, I'm going to show you how this tickle based test bench is actually working. So no, no design is loaded. But I'm going to go to simulate, start simulation, go to the work library, and click the code lock tb entity, this uh, compiled entity. I'm just going to click this one, click OK. And this will start the simulation, this will start the test bench and load the test bench into Monsim. But it's not going to run it, because we are still at 0 nanoseconds simulation time. I'm also going to do to type do wave.do to, to load my wave form so that we can observe the signals. But you see here we are still at zero nanoseconds, so nothing has happened in the test bench yet. <clears throat> now if I run for for example 10 nanoseconds, I'm typing run 10 nanoseconds, then we can see here that that the test bench has run and the signals are at the uh, initial values. Now in the Molsim console I can interact with the signals from from the console using tickle or using the, the Molsim command, commands. For example this input digit I'm going to read this signal from the Molsim console uh, and I do that in Molsim by typing examine and the name of the signal input underscore digit or let's actually read the enable signal. It's a simpler, just a standard logic. Examine, input, enable. And we'll see it's zero. It prints out zero. So now we get the value from the input enable signal in the VHDL code. And of course, in the waveform, it has the same value because that's the one that we are reading. <coughs> but I can also change the, uh, the signal value. And I can do that in Molsim by using the force keyword. The same uh, method, force, the input enable signal. Uh, it's the name of the signal that I want to change by using the force command. And the value I want to change it to now is one. I'm going to change it from zero to one. And I'm going to add the uh, switch deposit. I prefer to do this because that means that the um, Molsim simulator won't be continuously driving the signal, it's just going to change it and then let any other driver manipulate it afterwards. But there are none in this design, but this is the, the, my preferred way to change signal from tickle in Molsim. When I press enter now, it has changed. So if we examine it once more, it has the value 1 now. So if we run for 10 nanoseconds once more, we can see this signal has changed to 1. And this was the work of the tickle code or the Molson command in the tickle shell. 
Uh, it didn't happen in the VHDL code, it happened in Tickle. And that's the basis of uh, the Tickle-based test benches. So I'm going to go back to my VS Code simulator now. I'm going to open the Tickle-based test bench. So that's the basis of our test bench. We are using the examine keyword. And we are using the force keyword somewhere here. Here, force. So we are running the test bench uh, and we are examining the, the, um, the, uh, the uh, um, so we are running the test bench for a small amount of time and we are examining the signals and we are forcing them to change the, the input to the device in the test. So, so we are actually, actually performing all of the, um, the stimuli generation and the checking in the tickle-based test bench. And this is the uh, tickle-based test bench. I'm trying to go through it quickly now. Uh, first I define the namespace because in tickle it's best to define a namespace because otherwise you will be you, you can accidentally overwrite global variables. So I'm just putting everything inside of this namespace. Uh, yeah, new namespace. Then I'm loading the simulation and this is the same thing that we did just moments ago using the GUI. So I'm loading the simulation but I'm not running it. And then I'm loading the waveform if it exists and I provide a waveform in this example so you will see the waveform. And then I'm starting to read variables. <coughs> so I'm using the vari variable keyword in Tickle because that ties the variable to the namespace. And the first one I want to read is a clock period because everything is going to be based on the clock period. But I, I want to define the clock period only once. I have defined it in the VHDL code. And to read it, we can do this, examine clock period. Let's try to do that actually right now in Molsim. Examine clock period. We see here 10 nanoseconds. So that uh, gives me the, uh, the value from the, um, the VHDL code. And we are... Uh, Actually, this 10 nanoseconds is this is a string because everything is a string in Tickle. That's an, another story. Uh, but this is a string, and I want to just get the, uh, the number of nanoseconds and then get the time units like nanoseconds. So I have to do some string string manipulation, removing the braces here, and I'm uh, splitting it into two variables: the time units and the clock period. So this one has the nanoseconds. And this one has the 10. And then the next thing we have to do is to read the correct pin code from the device in the test. So I'm setting a variable here, pin code, and examining actually all of the uh, device and the test inputs. And now I'm looking into the device in the test by using this dot notation. So let's just do this. Copy this code in Molsim. You see that? One, two, three, four. So I read the generic input because in the VHDL test bench we assigned one, two, three, four to the pin code. So I read it now from the tickle code. And I assigned it to this pin code as a list. So it becomes a list in tickle. And then the last variable which I'm declaring before we start making procedures in tickle is a, a variable named error count. And I'm setting it to zero. And the idea behind this is that <clears throat> when the test bench completes, if the error count is still zero, then the test bench is a success or the simulation is, is a success. If it's something else, then there's an error because every time we encounter an error or detect an error in the device and test, we increment this error count. And before we start the test bench, I defined a number of, I will define a number of uh, TCL or tickle procedures. First, I'm defining a print message tickle procedure, which is uh, using the uh, Molsim specific now uh, variable and just printing out this, uh, 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 the, the time at the, at, at the moment and the time units and the message so that we get a nice printout which is timestamped in the Molsim console. So, when we are printing in this tickle-based test bench, from now on, we're going to use this print message, this procedure. The next procedure that I'm creating is a run clock cycles. So now I'm all of this is creating procedures. We're not running them yet. We're just defining them in the script. So this run clock cycles, it uh, takes an input count, the number of clock cycles that we want to run, because I want to, this is a synchronous module, so I want to run the 
the uh, simulation in steps based on the clock period. So I'm using this variable keyword here to get the uh, to get access to the, the variables that have already defined the clock period and the time units. We created them here. We lifted them from the VHDL code, and in this procedure, I'm going to use them. We have to uh, first declare them or lift them from the namespace by using by repeating repeating their names here. And then I'm going to do some math here, just the clock period times the number of clock periods. So when we call this procedure, we're going to call it, for example, run clock period or run clock cycles 10, and then it's going to run for 10 clock cycles because I'm calculating the number of nanoseconds here, here, and I'm typing run and just running the test bench for that many clock cycles and then stopping it. The next procedure that I have created is called check signals. And you can imagine what this one is going to do. It's going to check the output signal or the, <coughs> yeah, the outputs from the device in the test. So uh, it ha this procedure takes two parameters, signal name, which is the signal that we want to check the expected value. So first we supply a signal that we want to check and then we supply the value that we expect it to have and we're going to examine and uh, lift the value from the VHDL code uh, or the running simulation. We're going to check if the value matches the expected value and if not, we're going to use our print message uh, procedure to print that there's an error. We're going to increment the error count in the tickle test bench. And the final procedure that I have created is the try pin procedure, um, which will try a complete four-digit pin code because this uh, this uh, <coughs> this uh, module is, is it, it, it's not it's not purely combinational. It's also based on the previous values of the inputs, so it's like a state machine. Uh, and I'm going to use this try pin uh, procedure to to test all of the uh, the four pins, so we can supply a list of four pin four digits and call this procedure. And this procedure will get the correct pin code because we already lifted that from the VHDL code. At first, we set the pin status. So if the um, it's going to check this procedure, is this the correct pin code? Because this procedure has no if the pin code is the correct one, the one that we are going to try, because then it knows that it's going to expect it, the vault to be unlocked or locked. So. So it sets pin st status to correct if this is the correct pin code and incorrect if it's the incorrect pin code. And then we're going to print the message just so that we see that the test is running, running entering the, the correct or incorrect pin code and the, 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 the numbers. And, for, for, and then we go through a for loop for each of the digits, for each of the four digits, we are forcing the input digit signal, forcing the input enable signal and then running for one clock cycle and then forcing uh, the input enable back to zero and then running for one more clock cycle. So what I'm doing is just creating this behavior, setting the pin code, forcing the input enable, forcing it back to zero. So what we are doing is running and stopping the test bench and just manipulating and checking the signals. And after that, uh, when all of the four different correct pin codes are enabled, uh, we, are, we are going to check the output signal. So that depends. What the, what the unlock output is uh, supposed to be depends on if this was the correct pin code or if it was the incorrect one, right? Because if we enter the incorrect pin code, then the unlock signal should be zero. And that's what this does. This if statement, if the pin status is the correct one, if this was the correct pin code, then we expect, then we use the check signal procedure to check that the unlock output is one if not, we're expecting it to be zero. And then this procedure that I already uh, explained to you is going to take care of this and increment the error count, or, or not, if it's not a, if it's a success, if it's a success. Okay, and after we have defined all of the procedures, we're actually going to start running the test bench. So now I'm using the run clock cycles um, procedure to run for 10 clock cycles, just like this, run clock cycles 10, and I'm releasing the reset, I'm forcing the reset to zero, running for more, one more clock cycle to let it take effect. Then I'm checking the reset value because that's also something we want to check. So checking reset value, I'm printing to the console and 
calling our check signal, unlock should be zero because when we start the unlock should be zero because the vault should be, uh, should be locked, right? Then I'm going to try a few corner cases. I'm not going to try all of the, the uh, 10,000 pin codes because actually uh, tickle-based test benches are really slow and I'm going to, that's one of the disadvantages. But we can try four different corner cases. Um, so I'm going to try zero, 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 all zeros and all nines. I'm going to try the correct pin code and I'm going to reverse the pin code and just try the reverse of the correct pin code because I mean, I imagine that's an easy error to do, that uh, those would still work, but they shouldn't. So there's four cases. Then after we have run for these four cases and tested the four different pin codes, one of them correct and the other one one's not, we're going to check the error count output because this check signal would have set the error count output if there were some errors. Then if there were, this one is still zero, we're going to print test OK, so success to the console. If not, we're going to print test failure and list the number of errors. And that's the complete test bench. So <clears throat> to run this simulation in uh, Molsim, we are going to source the, uh, the, uh, the tickle file actually. So this all in a, it's all an explanation which you get when you run the um, example that you downloaded. It says here source, source, code lock slash code lock tv dot tickle. That's the name of the tickle script that I ju just showed you. So I'm typing it Molsim now and we'll see what happens. And there we go. We saw something happening in the waveform, and we can see here in the in the um, Molsim console it says a timestamp 110 nanoseconds checking reset value. So this is the uh, print message. It's timestamping all the messages, the print message procedure, and it says entering incorrect pin code 000, entering incorrect pin code 999, entering correct pin code 1234 entering incorrect pin code 4321. And then at the end, it says test OK. So the test passed and that is how our test bench worked. And we can see in the, um, the waveform stuff is happening here. Here it's, uh, it's running and stopping the test bench. So th th this is how it works, this um, tickle-based test bench, but let's try to like simulate an error. So I'm going to go into the code lock module and make an artificial error. So instead of, uh, yeah, here, here when we are unlocking, I'm going to change so that we don't look at the pin number one, we only, we only look at the pin number two twice, like a typo or something in our code. I'm going to uh, recompile now I'm going to run the test bench once more by using the source command. We can see what happens. So the test bench is running, it's not going to stop now. But in the end, uh, we can see that it says test failure one errors. And the uh, check signal procedure printed out error, unlock equals zero expected one. So that's the uh, Tickle script, tickle test bench right here. Error expected this signal. And that is uh, actually the complete test bench and uh, I've demonstrated now how it works. Uh, I kind of uh, have some mixed feelings about tickle because there, there are obviously some advantages to using it because you can do stuff which you can't do in, in, in only VHDL. For example, you can create an interactive test bench. I have a different blog post on that. You can go check this blog post. There's a link to the interactive blog post um, in this article. Uh, so that's some cool things that you can do, but there are also some disadvantages. Um, so, well, first, the advantages are that uh, you can do more than you can do in VHDL, as I just said. And uh, another advantage is that you can run the test bench and change it and just run it again without recompiling because of course Tickle is software language, language is an interpreted language, it's not 
compiled language, so you don't need to recompile the test bench. Perhaps the biggest advantage of a tickle based test bench is that it enables you to create the test bench in a different way than the device on the test, and that's a good thing. For an error to pass, you would have to make the same mistake in two vastly different technologies, and that's unlikely. Now, the disadvantages are mainly that it's not portable. Tickle is closely tied to the uh, simulator that you're using because this Tickle code that I wrote, it uses many Molesim specific uh, commands. And if I want to, for example, to port this one to Vivado, I would have to change a lot. With VHDL, it works in every capable VHDL simulator, but that's not the case with Tickle. You get this vendor lock-in. And uh, Tickle-based test benches are much slower than VHDL-based test benches because they are continuously stopping and starting the simulator and simulator has to jump in and out of simulation mode and that takes a lot more time and they are vastly slower, like magnitudes slower than VHDL test benches. And maybe the final thing that I dislike about Tickle-based test benches is that it's, it's not a forgiving language. It's not like Java or Python, which helps you detect errors. If you get an error in Tickle, it's not easy to debug. So it's not really a simpler language than VHDL. It's just a different one. Uh, and that for me is kind of the biggest reason to not use Tickle. But that being said, it's an important language to know. You should really le learn it because it's kind of glue language between VHDL and, and the software world. So that's all that I had for you in this video. Uh, go ahead and click the link to get to the article and download the project, try it for yourself, and leave any comments that you may have in the description or in the comment section for this video.